direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access. It's Foxborough Central, and here's your host, Bob Hickey. And welcome to another episode of Foxborough Central. My name is Bob Hickey. I am your host, and I welcome you. Thank you for taking a little bit of time to join me and my guests as we talk about the people, events, and organizations that make Foxborough the gem of Norfolk County. Well, not always about Foxborough, because today I'm joined by, uh, I guess I'll call you now, old friend, uh, Major <laughs> Joe Relanitis. How are you doing today, Bob, sir? Bob, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, and Joe, of course, is with the Food and Drug Administration, the federal government, who seems to have their fingers and tentacles everywhere in our lives. <laughs> but this is one of the good ways. These are the people who, uh, Food and Drug Administration are, one, are the people who protect our supply of, and as I get to know you more, it seems to be just about everything. We are everywhere. We're tentacles everywhere. Tentacles everywhere. But unlike the IRS, this is a good thing. Uh, we hope so. We, we <laughs> hope so. Food's important. Medication's important. Well, today we're going to talk about something that's very important, which is women's health issues. Yes. Uh, women's health issues are a, a topic that's broad ranging, but when you break it down is you know, something that the Food and Drug Administration, uh, maybe surprisingly, but perhaps not so surprisingly, is on the front line of ensuring uh, good health, good practices. And what I'm really excited to talk about today are some of the new things going on with the FDA. Yeah, we're really concerned about about the consumer population. You know, our consumers are your viewers here in Foxborough and elsewhere. And we're all taxpayers. We, we're, and we all pay our money into that big <laughs> pot to get good services, Bob. Well said. Yeah, women's uh, health awareness, especially heart health, is a real major concern. We, uh, we pick, as I mentioned before the show, we pick topics that we really focus on in the federal government periodically. And women's heart health awareness is sort of where we're at right now. Did you know that like one in four uh, of American women will die from heart-related disease? It's, a, it's 25%. One in four. One in four. No, I thought it was the men, the male population, that had the higher instance of heart-related issues. Don't we all? I, I thought the same thing before these stats you know, appeared on my computer and appeared on my desk and are here at the studio today. Because I'm assuming that. I, I've taken a heavy insurance on me. I want my wife to be taken care of. But you're saying that... It's a big concern. Okay. It's a major concern. Uh, and, you know, as, as you find out more, you, you look at these stats and details, and you've got the, you know, the folks in, in Washington, and whatever, looking at them and getting the message out. You really have to, we really have to bring that message home to the ladies. They're such an important part of American society and protecting their heart health awareness um, is a real huge concern. And there, there are steps. There are steps that people can take to, uh, to address that. Well, let's talk about the steps and let's also talk about uh, some of the real impacts. So you're talking about one in four American women. Correct. Uh, and when you say heart disease, dying of heart disease, is this... Simply a heart attack, age. you know, heart attack, you know, premature death related to uh, to just not caring and, and you know doing the right things to, to maintain heart health awareness. Um, and a lot of that is a lack of education because sure. I know many folks, myself included, um, learn as we go along, and hopefully we knock on wood, learn before it's too late. Uh, and so that's why I'm glad we're here talking about this. But so, uh, women's heart issues. The preventative steps, a well, lot of it just has to be identifying with the issues to begin with. That's correct. That's correct. And you know, we're, we're a fast-moving society. You know, you're a busy guy. We're all busy. We've they got, tell me I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, I know you are. I know you do, you do a lot. You're the, you're the sort of the, the media guru for Fox Pro I here. don't know about that. Uh, but fans of Foxborough Central know that we're always happy to have really qualified guests come in here and talk to Appreciate us. Appreciate so. that. Um, you know, if, if, a, if managing pre-existing health conditions, high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol, diabetes is really important for ladies. You got to diagnose a health, you know, health problem prior to, and you got to you got to manage it. You get proper medication, proper awareness proper dietary control, really a big thing for everybody, especially because of today's topic, especially for ladies. Um, and also recognizing the signs of a heart attack. You know, you, sometimes you just don't feel well. You have this anxiety thing going on, pains in the chest, you know, upper body discomfort. 
it could be a sign of a heart attack. Learn to diagnose and take a look and take a listen at your body, especially ladies. So you didn't just you did not just mention the pain radiating down. Important. So important we're talking positive. about before that. Happens. Yeah, you know, ex, you know, extreme anxiety. Um, you know, pains elsewhere besides the one which radiates down from the upper body. Uh, you know, tightness of the chest. Uh, at nausea, nausea, you know, coming out of almost nowhere, you think it does, you know, aches and pains, things that you, not to be paranoid about your, about your, you know, your, your daily condition, but recognize things that are different. But we know our body and we know how we feel when we're healthy and happy. And so what you're we saying do. is that if there's a sudden Change. issue. Yeah. Look at it. Unexplained. You know, exactly. Well, there's usually an explanation somewhere, and it could be a coronary problem. It really, but you know what? You're getting the groceries. You're dropping off the kids. You're picking up the kids. You're going to your job. You're doing 114 things with Bob every day, every morning, every afternoon. Take some time out if you're a lady. And you know, you know, do the awareness thing. Do, do a little check. If you don't feel, as you said, if you don't feel really good, uh, Think about it. Mm -hmm. Recognize those problems. Really important. Um, and you know, if you smoke, and we're going to, another show that we're going to touch upon tobacco use in teens. Um, if you smoke, and if you're a lady, try to quit or try to cut back. That's well, good advice for men too. Yeah, it's good. It's good for everybody. But both. Both subsets of the species. That, exactly. Advice. Yeah, smoking is just not a win-win situation. It's just, it's just not. So try to cut back. That's not, a, not a bad thing to do. And you know, I don't know. If we have, we haven't done a show on label reading yet, and I hope in the future we could. But ladies still are a big part in preparing foods, you know, for the family. Um, take some time to read labels. You know, look at sodium content. Look at calories. You know, look at all the contents in your labels, and be a smart user of labels, reader of labels, uh, when you're preparing food and serving food to yourself and your family. Well, the labeling seems to be an issue that and I, I'm going to ask, because the Food and Drug Administration, the genesis of the current standardized labeling initiatives that we see, or are you simply the enforcers of some other group that regulated that? No, we, we, we helped create, uh, back in like 1990, the Nutrition Labeling Education Act. Mm -hmm. uh, we promulgated and put forth those regulations, you know, with Congress to upgrade the entire labeling schematic on all our foods. Because it seems as though, I, I think it was three or four years ago, everything suddenly became clearer, if right. you will. <laughs> Uh, in, put. In, including uh, it's the same type of font and everything in the exact same order. And I'll tell you, I, uh, I'm obviously not a lady, but you know, I started to read labels and I started to try to educate myself. I wear this Fitbit thing and I've, I've tried to lose a little bit of weight. And this Fitbit thing is nothing more or less than helping me educate myself right. as to calorie intake and exercise levels and you know, what am I really doing throughout the day that's either using up calories or not using up calories. Sure. And so there's no magic cure, no magic fix, but education, at least for me, has been a big piece of, of my losing a little bit of weight. And so the labeling, I've somehow, I won't say suddenly, because I like to think I'm a little more intelligent than that, but I have suddenly come to realize that the labeling is pretty cool in that the calories are always listed where they're supposed to be and all of the other information, the sodium. Whatnot. Ingredients and such, yeah. Yeah, so when you're talking about looking at the labeling, you're talking about nothing more or less than simply educating yourself as to what you're ingesting, what you're feeding the family, and what you're, what you're actually preparing as opposed to the prepared foods that you eat that already has maybe a high calorie content or a high sodium content or a lot of the chemicals that maybe uh, would equal that as opposed to fresh fruits and vegetables. Sure. Which I mean, we should all eat. We yeah. all we all remember the food pyramid, which I guess no longer exists. And that's, okay, that's a whole nother That's evolved, too. I don't know if you have time for all the topics we have to talk about. But, <laughs> Endless uh, stuff. I know we don't today, but so we're going to stay focused on women's health issues. But there's a lot that goes into the uh, nutritional information on labeling 
that is good information. True. And it's evolving all the time. It's changing. You, you mentioned a couple of years ago where the font size increased in certain areas. And it's, it's going to always evolve, mm -hmm. Robert. It really is. We're always going to look at our labels and hopefully make them better for the American consumer. And, and of course, the impact here is, is on the ladies and so forth and so on. Um, besides, you know, understanding what you're, what you're consuming, what you're serving to your family, um, you, ought to, if, you ought to develop a rapport, everybody should, um, with your health care giver. I mean, who knows you better than your doctor or your nurse, the people that you go to for medical care? And having a, a real one-to-one -one conversation, if you're a woman, on heart health awareness, you can't lose. It can only help you. You should really get, you know, some good input as to as to how you should manage your health health regimen, whether it's diet, whether it's exercise. If you're if you're healthy enough to exercise, and what your steps and what the dangers of, of a heart attack are for you if you're a lady. So you know, it, it's pretty commonsensical in a lot of ways, but it takes time. It takes discipline. You just said you, you have taken some time out to remind yourself of, of a good quality regimen when it comes to you know dietary restriction, do's well, and don'ts. I'll come down off the mountain. It's a daily struggle. Oh, it is. It is. There's so much to eat. It's so much. We have so much to eat. Not all of it it's really all, good. But it's all really good. Yeah, it's, it's all great. You know, can you say pizza and beer and uh, all that good stuff? I can you know? say in the same sentence. <laughs> it's true, but you know we, we really owe it to our families, to ourselves, to to not if you're a woman not to be one of that 25 percent that that is a fatality for, from heart disease. Now that's a staggeringly high it's statistic. Dreadful. When I thought that it was the the male sector that was really at risk for this, so in looking at that, the ob well, maybe it's not so obvious, but to me, obviously, the time to have this discussion with your healthcare providers is during your annual physical. It would help, it would help, yeah. And if you have signs and symptoms before, and if you're really concerned about your heart health, um, you know, make that appointment early, better earlier than later. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, this is sort of time sensitive. We need to get a real handle on, on women's heart health. And we have a website, if you go to the FDA's website, which is www.fda.gov and do backslash woman's heart health, woman's heart health. You'll get all this literature that I use in, in, in this interview and all this stuff which, which is important to, to know and be aware of. You can print it, you can read it, you should look it over, go to the FDA, and where it's a pretty user-friendly website. Uh, well, it, it is, and again, I'm speaking with Major Joe Relanitis, who is our regional representative for the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, he puts a good face on our federal government and their outreach services uh, to protect us as well as to promote, uh, in this case, good health for women. And the website at www.fda.gov is a very user-friendly site. It's chock full of information. So I do encourage folks to go out to that website and uh, do a little education for yourself, but also there are some links in there that might surprise you as far as uh, piquing some interest and, and going down a path, a path less traveled, if you will, that uh, you might find interesting. So I find it to be a very dynamic website. So uh, government's doing something right there. We're, we're sure trying. We're sure trying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's it's yeah, it's good to be educated. It's good to be aware, um, and uh, you know it, the benefits are immense. Um, longevity is a plus, especially in America nowadays. And make make a plan. You know, take action. You know, you know, you know, look at what you eat. You know, learn about the signs and symptoms of heart problems. Uh, you know, manage pre-existing conditions. You know, don't smoke. Quit smoking. Cut back. You know, you know work with the health care giver. Um, there's always that 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 philosophy about an aspirin a day. Well, sometimes aspirin can help. It's not right for everybody. Um, once again, work with your health care giver to see if you should take aspirin as a, as a means of you know, improving your heart health awareness and so forth and so on. It's just a, it's just a huge topic, Bob, and, and we need to get that message out to your viewers. And it's great that you guys give us an opportunity to come on here and you know, bring the message home. To, uh, to your viewers, you know, my consumers and so forth. Well, your consumers are uh, our viewership and we appreciate your taking the time to come down and talk to us. So with this issue of women's health issues, uh, what's current with the FDA as far as, as 
promoting a message or pushing an agenda? Well, there's more medication being approved for, uh, for diabetes, which of course is, is an epidemic in this country. Um, but isn't it true that diabetes affects just men? And isn't it true that diabetes is just because we eat too much? No, sometimes it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a bad pancreas and, and not enough insulin being made. Sometimes it's genetic, sometimes it's diet related or, or lifestyle related, you know, type one, type two, they're, they're different. Um, and, and we're looking really closely at someday, hopefully getting a cure for that. And it might be a long ways down the road, I'm not really sure, but um, I'm seeing medications coming out that are going through clinical trials that are being approved. Um, you know, to deal with diabetes. Once again, it's a it's a life quality situation. I mean, if we if we eat better, if we do well as far as stress goes, if we manage our diets, if we get out and, and, and do some you know, physical activities mm -hmm. under a, the guidelines of a, of a healthcare giver, I think we can deal much more effectively, both male and female, uh, you know, adult and children with the problems for diabetes in, in American society. And with that, we have, again, we're talking about women's health issues today. And with the diabetes issue um, and women's health, I, I suppose that a good, not I won't say segue, but a good way to talk about the current health care laws under, a, we'll call it Obam, Obamacare, but uh, annual physicals are part of standard coverage and it's not an out of pocket for a patient or a customer. So if there is the healthcare coverage, then it should be no reason not to get an annual physical and have these conversations and have this evaluation, have this checkup on an annual basis. Great segue. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well Every once in a while, <laughs> well I'll said, throw some Bob. spaghetti on the wall and boom, there we go. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason in this country why you cannot have really high quality, effective health care. And, and you bring this conversation for ladies, for men, for everywhere about heart health awareness to the table when you're talking to your, your physician. Mm -hmm. I mean, that should be a required, you know, bullet point topic for everybody, you, me, everybody to discuss when you're talking to your health care provider. And it's funny because when you go for a physical, particularly if it's a health care provider you've known for a long time, um, you end up talking about things, but maybe you don't hit all the topics. And so you mentioned before about making a plan, and I had mentioned the word agenda. Maybe it's nothing more or less than bringing in a little note card and saying, these are the things I want to cover with my health care provider. Why not? I'm having a chat with a doctor. I want to make sure I cover boom, 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 and boom. Sure. Why not? I mean, don't look at your watch because you've got another appointment scheduled shortly after. Yeah, take some, be your best advocate. You know, yeah, that's the great part of being down here in Foxborough is you let us get that message out and, and remind folks that they need to be their best advocate, Bob, as far as healthcare goes. I mean, no one will do it better than yourself, mm -hmm. really, because I mean, you're you're invested in your health and well-being. So you know, if you know, for for women especially, um, I suppose part of it is also your doctor or your nurse practitioner is no different than the auto mechanic. They can't diagnose something unless you tell them what the problem is, even if it's not necessarily. Everybody jokes about, and I go to the mechanic and say, well, my car's doing a hunga, a hunga, a hunga, a hunga, a what is it? Well, if the mechanic doesn't know your car is going a hunga, a hunga, a hunga, then how can they fix it? And if your doctor <laughs> doesn't know that you've got maybe a little tightness or right. maybe you're feeling a little stressed or maybe some anxious that you can't uh, explain, then how is he or she supposed to right. diagnose or magically say, oh, by the way, you've got some significant blockage. Sure, sure. Uh, and and it's, it's all part of the plan. It's mm -hmm. all part of the plan. It's, as I said earlier, you've got to be your best advocate. You've got to you know, put it all on the table. You've got to realize that you know, almost 25% of American women uh, will become fatalities due to heart, you know, heart, uh, heart disease, heart attacks. That is an amazing statistic, it's, it's by the way. It's a huge stat, huge stat. Um, and so it's just, it's just, um, just it's an obligation. It's it's a it's a personal obligation. It's a social obligation. The government can only do so much. And I know there are folks that say the government does no, too I'm much. I'm Reagan Republican, <laughs> so I don't want that government in my back pocket. So you know we we can only do, do so much <laughs> to get a point across. And you know it's it's great it's great to come down here and, and talk about these topics. But once again, it, it's up to your viewers to, to act on them. And you know we bring the knowledge. You bring the uh, you you bring the great 
great personality and wisdom. Who's and that? That's you, Bob. Oh. And, uh, and that helps a lot. And uh, we just really want your viewers to get out there and be aware that uh, there are just ways to improve quality of life, you know, whether it's diabetic awareness and treatment, understanding your labels and realizing that labels are forever going to change and evolve and get better or, and carry that all to, uh, to women's heart health awareness. And if you, you know, smoke, quit smoking, you know, if you have pre-existing conditions, see to them, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, whatever the case might be, you know, have a plan, take your medication, uh, work out if you can, do the right things to make sure your quality of life is there if you're a lady. I could not have ever said that better. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And that is the final message from the Food and Drug Administration to women, women's heart health, women's health issues. Uh, thank you for taking a little bit of time today, Joe, to spend with me Bob. and my civil company as we uh, learn more about the Food and Drug Administration and their initiatives to help us lead a healthier life. If you missed any of this information, uh, feel free to go to the Food and Drug Administration's website at www.fda.gov. And I'm not even going to attempt this, Joe. Where do we go to look at specific women's health issues? You want to do backslash women's heart health, backslash women's heart health, get you a lot of stuff. And if you didn't have your pencil out to write that down, always feel free to watch us again on a replay or log on to www.fcatv.org and catch this show or any of our other wonderful shows from Foxborough Central. Click on the tab. You can see us. If you have an idea for a future program, perhaps you or your organization would like to be featured, feel free to reach out to me, Bob Hickey, your host, at foxcentral at fcatv.org. Shoot me an email and maybe you will be on a future episode of Foxboro Central. On behalf of all the volunteers here at The Cable Company, Deb Stores, Betty Travers behind the cameras, Gary Nash behind the glass, Michael Weber, our executive director, and Lauren Batar, the one who programs us and keeps us on the air. I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time to spend with me and my guests, and I hope you have a great day, Foxboro. Take care.